So things have changed and we're doing a lot more presentations via video and video conferencing instead of on stage. And it's all of we know because of Corona. Well, not that Corona or even that Corona, but this Corona. Now you've probably noticed I've done something surprising, which is insert some of my slide graphics into the video. I think this is a tremendous gain over the old way that you typically see slides shared in video conferencing tools and video presentations. So I'm going to walk you through some of the options you have in doing that and let you decide what you'd like to do in order to jazz up the way you present. Now, what you're going to see is a presentation starting with the use of transparent slides, which is to say it's slides which lay over on your video so that you're there and they come into the space you're in. Now, this is being done with a tool called Prezi Video, part of the Prezi Next Suite, and it's a presentation tool that's pretty popular with, with many presenters and alternative to PowerPoint. I'm going to show you later how you can do some of these things even with PowerPoint and the older Prezi and other presentation tools. Now, here's an example of a video or a clip I captured from a regular online presentation done by a friend of mine. And you can see they put up her slides and she's just a very small box in the bottom corner. And that's not a very good way to make a connection with your audience. If you are a good presenter, it's not about your slides. It's also just as much about you. So let's look at what you might do in order to make transparent slides. So this Prezi video tool you can download for Windows and Mac, and it creates a virtual camera. And that camera looks like a webcam to software like Zoom and Skype and all the other tools you might use. And that way it can feed the video you have plus the slides it's generating out to your audience. Now, this is different, unfortunately, from the classic Prezi that many of us have known and been using for some time. Classic Prezi doesn't do this, except through the techniques I'm going to show you now. In order to use Prezi Video and Prezi Next, you have to convert your presentation, really rebuild it entirely in Prezi Next and the Prezi Video format. Specifically, using the, the tools to put all the text away from where you're going to appear on the screen. This is a lot of work. However, it looks very nice and you don't need to change anything about your environment. You don't have to get a green screen. In fact, it's good if it's in your ordinary home or office. It shows your homey environment while at the same time looking slick and technical. But if you don't use Prezi Video or Prezi Next, if you already have presentations that have been built up in other tools, there are some other options by flipping this around and using classic green screen to put your slides on top of you. So I'm going to leave Prezi Video right now for a moment and switch to a video that I'm going to make using another video editing tool. Then we'll come back and talk about a little more that you can do. To show you another technique, what I've done is taken a slide deck and changed its background so the background is the bright green color of chroma key. That means that any chroma key software like we've been using to do a green screen for ourselves can be used to make the slide background transparent and overlay the slides on top of you. Here's my ordinary camera view. Now I'm going to insert some of these transparent slides into my view. Here's one that I produced from a deck where I designed it so there would be nothing on the left hand side, just the transparent background. And that way it looks like I've put that into my world. I can now advance those slides and move to the next slide, go back and forth. Now, because you may not have modified your slide deck in order to deal with these uh, needs of having your face in there. You can also shrink the slide deck and here we see it uh, able to move around and in fact now we'll go to some slides I didn't modify with still with a transparent background and you can see that I can still fit them in the world with my head still visible as long as they don't completely fill the screen. In order to shoot green screen you're going to have to get a physical green screen and set it up. I'll show you a little bit about that and then later I'll show you about how that actually looks uh, and the tools you can use to make it happen.
So you're going to have to buy the screen. Now you can get them on a lot of different websites and BH Photo and Amazon, eBay and so on. You can either get a fairly large one that's about 10 by 15 feet. That one you're going to have to hang on a rod, usually on what are called background stands that are very common in the photography world. You can also get, as I have, a smaller screen which is about 5 feet by 7 feet. It has a frame around it which stretches it. That turns out to be very important. But it's very small. Small is good, but small is also bad. You really can only do video like this of your head and shoulders against a screen that size. If you want to do whole body, want to move around, you're going to need the bigger one. Now, you are going to have to find a way to make sure it stretches tight. You don't want creases in it. And you're also going to have to make sure that you can sit a little distance in front of it so that you can light it very brightly. You need to light it more brightly than you're lit, and you don't want that light shining on you. These are all the ingredients to good green screen technique. Once you get your green screen, you're going to be able to move to the next level, which is applying a chroma key to it and feeding it into a video mixing program. Now, there are a lot of tools around there for video mixing. Um, one of the more popular ones is a free open source one called OBS. Uh, there are commercial tools like XSplit, Wirecax, vMix. Some of them have high prices, some of them have low prices, some of them have free trials. The most important thing for you is getting what's called a virtual camera function. And that's the same function that Prezi Video had, the ability to take the mixed video that they produce and make it look like a webcam to your operating system. Unfortunately, in most cases, Windows, sometimes the Mac. That means that other tools like Skype and Zoom can use it as a webcam. They can use the mixed video as the source, and so you'll be able to send out, as though it were in your camera, the combined video with your slides and you mix together. So let's go into one of these tools and take a look at what that can look like and what you can do. Now I've put up a green screen behind me. The screen is brightly lit, and the computer can tell the difference between it and me, make it transparent, and put me in the middle of a scene. There are many things you can do with this. You've seen them in every TV show and movie. You can, of course, just put backgrounds behind yourself so you look like you're in different places. You can even have video backgrounds. This is a video shot through the wall behind me, making it look as though the wall is transparent, and you're seeing what's outside my house. I also enjoy putting myself in strange places. This, for example, is after they've burned the man at Burning Man and everyone's dancing around him. You'll notice I've made my own video a little darker and redder to fit with what's going on there. Your real goal, though, is going to be to put yourself in front of your slides. And here I am in front of some of my slides. Of course, I'm full size, which is what you want for talking to the audience, uh, but they can't see what's happening when I move the slides, I'm blocking them. So that means it's a good idea to sometimes put yourself down in the corner. This way you're blocking only the corner of the slides. That will work with most slide decks, but it's also possible for you to modify the slides just a little bit so there's nothing really important for people to see in that part. If there is something very important or you have a full screen video, you can remove yourself entirely and that way people can be sure to see all the slides. Another thing that makes sense is to shrink the slides a little bit and make yourself a little bit bigger. That way you can make better contact with the audience and still not be blocking too much of your slides. When it is time to sit and talk to them, always possible to return to the full screen. Now, I think that this configuration here is a good choice. I'll actually change some of the slides and you can see them running behind me as we operate. Uh, we can see uh, zooming in on the United States. This is Prezi, but this could be PowerPoint. This could be a, a website. It could be anything that you can display on a screen. The last technique we're going to look at is uh, a simpler technique, uh, but it doesn't look as good, but it can be a lot easier to do, and it can be the best choice if you don't have a lot of time and resources, and that is simple insertion mixing your video and the slides together by just taking one box of view and putting it with the box of the slides. You can shrink the slides enough so you'll both fit on the screen together. You don't have to change your slides at all. You can change your slides and leave an area in the slides to stick your video on top of, uh, but ideally you don't have to change them very much and you don't need a physical green screen or any change to your studio. You're just going to make your video a little bit more of a portrait video that takes only your head and put that into the slides in a way that people can see you and them together. So here we'll take a look at what that can look like as well. Okay, 
Now we're going to talk about using simple video editing with no green screen, uh, no fancy tricks and modification of your slides to at least put your slides and you together in a better way. Here we're going through the OBS program, we're just showing me, and we can also of course select to show just the slides, which we can see over here, they're on my other monitor, and I can play and show the slides without my face, but that's kind of boring, we don't want to do that, we want to have me in there. So one thing you can do is put yourself in the corner. Here I've made a box for myself which is portrait shape rather than landscape shape and that lets it fit together with the slides which I shrunk a little bit. Now I still have some overlap with the slides. If it happens that uh, a slide has something important in that area I can always switch over and give people the entire slides or I could have other views where this corner view of me is a little bit smaller. I could have other ones which are bigger. If I want to modify the slides and make them so that they don't have anything on the right hand side, they're in 4 to 3 style instead of 16 9 style, I could also do it that way. Um, now you can see this is not as flexible as having the green screen but it requires a lot less work and a lot less changing of the slides. You can also of course make yourself so small that you're very unlikely to block the slides and let them be at full screen. Now here you, I am blocking a little bit but it doesn't take much modification of your slides to make sure that there's nothing important in that bottom right hand corner where your face is going to be. Okay that's it. Uh, hopefully with these hints you can get a, an idea of what you can do with these techniques, decide which technique is right for you, and then you can start learning about the software tools that you're going to use to make it happen. I didn't teach you about how to configure OBS or to use Prezi Video. Um, those are whole other lessons and I'll write some text files up about that and you can also find resources on the web. But from this at least you should be able to decide both that you really want to do this because I think you do. I think just going with standard slides and tiny head is no longer going to be the way uh, and also what you're going to need to do in order to make it happen.